Today during science, we're going to continue reading our Motion and Matter FOSS Science textbook. I'm going to go to the page finder and turn to page 10. Today we're going to talk about change in motion. So you'll notice in this picture how the two girls are pulling the wagon with pumpkins in it. What if they wanted to push the wagon with pumpkins in it? Let's listen. Change of motion. A wagon is a useful tool for moving a heavy load around. You might give your sister or brother a ride on the sidewalk. Or suppose you had a wagon sitting motionless with a load of pumpkins in it. To move the pumpkins, you will need to put the wagon into motion. How can you do that? You have two options. You can get behind the wagon and push, or you can grab the handle in front and pull. The wagon will not move by itself. So remember, nothing moves by themselves. You have to give it force. The wagon will move only if a force acts on it. Pushes and pulls are forces. Forces make things move. So when you push on a wagon, that's a type of force. When you pull on a wagon, that's also a type of force. So if we look at this diagram above, in this left diagram, the pushes and pulls are forces, right? Forces make things move. So the girl is pushing on the wagon, which makes the wagon move forward. In the right diagram, the girl is pulling on the wagon to the right. That's what makes the wagon move forward. Let's keep listening. If you use a force to get the wagon moving, it will keep rolling. But you don't want the moving wagon to crash into something. How can you stop it? It takes force to change the motion of a moving object. Again, you can do one of two things. Look at the pictures below. You can get in front of the wagon and push to slow or stop its motion. A. Or you can get behind the wagon, grab it, and pull to slow its motion. B. To make a moving object stop, you need to push or pull in the opposite direction of the motion. To change the motion of an object, a force is needed. So if something is already moving and you want to stop that thing from moving, you also need to change its motion, right? So if this wagon is moving to the right and you want to stop it, you push it to the left, then it stops moving. If this wagon is moving to the right, you could also pull it to the left and that will stop it from moving. Let's keep listening. If the rolling wagon of pumpkins is moving too slowly, can you make it move a little faster? You can if you use more force. If you get behind the rolling wagon and give it another push, the wagon will move faster. If you get in front of the wagon and give another pull on the handle, the wagon will move faster. A push or pull in the direction of the motion will make the wagon move faster. To change the motion of an object, a force is needed. So if you want a wagon to move faster, you could go along the wagon, pull at it a little bit, and it will move faster with you. You could also get behind it, give it a little push, and it will move faster too. That force needs to go in the same direction as the direction the thing is already moving. If the wagon starts moving too fast, use a push or a pull to slow it down. A force can cause a moving object to change its speed. 
If the wagon starts to turn to one side, how can you get it rolling straight again? Use a force. But this time, you need a push or pull to the side of the wagon to change its direction of motion. Any change of motion of an object, such as starting, stopping, change of speed, or change of direction, requires a force. So now, imagine that the wagon is, you want to change the direction that the wagon is going. You would push the wagon from its side. Now let's talk about gravity. Gravity. Think about a ball in one spot on a table. A gentle push on the ball will put it into motion. The ball will roll across the table. What will happen when the ball comes to the edge of the table? The ball will roll off the edge and fall to the ground. The ball's motion changes when it rolls off the edge of the table. It moves in a different direction and starts to move faster. So you can try, try this at home, right? Get a ball and put it on the table that you're sitting at. Give the ball a little push. First, it will roll across the table. Then, gravity will pull it down to the ground as it reaches the edge of the table. Gravity is a force. It pulls the ball down. What causes this change of motion? That's right, force. What force makes the ball move toward the ground? The force that makes the ball fall to the ground is gravity. Gravity is a pulling force between two objects, and it draws them toward each other. As objects get bigger, the force of gravity between them gets stronger. Earth is a huge object so it pulls strongly on all other objects. It is the force of gravity that pulls objects toward Earth's center. So we are all being affected by gravity all the, all the time. That's a force that's pulling us down so that we don't float away into space. But why doesn't the ball on the table move before you give it a push? Gravity is pulling on the ball, but it is not falling. The ball doesn't move because the table is pushing up on the ball. The table pushes up with a force equal to the force of gravity pulling down. So the reason the ball doesn't fall to the ground when it's sitting on the table is because the table is actually pushing the ball up, even though we feel like the ball is just sitting on the table. Now what about balanced forces? What does that mean? Balanced forces. When two forces are exactly equal, but push or pull in opposite directions, we say the forces are balanced. If you hold a ball up above your head, it will not fall to the ground as long as your arm muscles push up. Your muscles must push up with a force that is exactly equal and opposite to the force pulling the ball downward. After a short time, your arm muscles will tire. Your arm will no longer push up with a force equal to the force of gravity pulling the ball down. So the reason this ball right here that the girl is holding is not moving is because gravity is pulling it down, yes. But the arm, her arm, is pushing the ball up. When her arm gets tired, gravity wins and the ball will come down. But gravity never tires. Gravity always pulls down. Soon, the forces keeping the ball in a position above the ground will no longer be balanced. The force of gravity will be stronger than your arm force, and the ball will fall to the ground. If you return the ball to the flat tabletop, it will again not move. Why doesn't the ball fall to the ground? So when the ball is on the table, why doesn't it fall to the ground? 
The ball doesn't move because the forces acting on it are balanced. There are two forces. One force is the table. The table is pushing upward on the ball. The other force is gravity. Gravity is pulling the ball downward toward Earth's center. When two equal forces act on an object in opposite directions, the forces are balanced. When the forces acting on an object are balanced, the object's motion does not change. So with this ball that's sitting on the table, gravity is pulling it down. The table is pushing the ball up. Since the table's force and the gravity's force are equal or balanced, the ball is not moving. So what happens when the forces are no longer balanced? But what happens if you tip the table so it acts like a ramp? The ball starts to roll down the table. If the ball starts moving, a force must be acting on the ball. Tipping the table unbalances the forces. The forces are no longer equal and opposite. Gravity pulls the ball downhill toward Earth's center. The round ball rolls across the table over the edge, and down to the ground. So if you tip this table and it's crooked, right, gravity is pulling, on, pulling down on the ball. The table is no longer pushing up on the ball at the, same, um, at the same rate. It's not balanced. So then the ball starts to roll. Imagine you are sitting at the top of a slide. The moment the forces become unbalanced, gravity starts to pull you down. Here's something to think about. What happens when you play baseball and hit the ball high into the air? Motion is involved, so there must be force involved. Let's analyze the activity. The pitcher applies force to the ball with her arm. The ball moves in the direction of the batter. The batter applies force to the bat, which puts it in motion. If all goes well for the batter, the bat will make contact with the ball. Forces have both direction and strength. The direction and strength of the force applied by the bat sends the ball flying out into the field. So let's watch that happening in this video. The ball comes toward the batter. The batter uses the bat to hit the ball. That's the force. So the force that the pitcher used to throw it and the, pit and the force that the batter used to hit it both affect the ball. Can you think of other instances when forces of different sizes and direction are applied to an object? Think about soccer and bowling. For your assignment in Seesaw today, take a ball or something at your house and try moving it. You can make a video of yourself applying force on that object. 